welcome to today's episode and in today's episode we will take a look at how to weld every literally every double fruit model doesn't matter how many ports you have doesn't matter how complicated it is or what kind of constructions it consists of i'm going to show you a method on how to weld every literally every double fruit model okay and let me emphasize you the point of why we want to do that in the first place so remember this tool right here come on where is it it is right here so remember this tool so you guys should know that when i take one of these models right here let's take this one okay so when i move it inside of here and when i call this one handle and i'll call this port inside of your stem so you guys know that this is now the handle of our tool okay and when i go ahead wait let's move it inside of the starter pack yeah when i go ahead and play the sling and then try to equip it then you see that the stem is gone okay the stem is right here and that is the point of welding <clears throat> so the problem is that as you can see your fruit model it falls apart so when we would have more parts which form the double fruit model then you would see this better then you would see a bunch of parts just laying down on the ground while having the part which is called handle inside of our hands right so this is the importance of welding what welding does is that it keeps every player uh, every part attached to each other so it so it, it, it keeps the unit of the fruit okay so that's the reason why we want to weld and when it comes to welding and the objects you want to weld you have objects which are very easy to weld because they have less parts okay they, they have a few parts in this case we only have one part which we want to weld in those cases only one part as well but if we take a look at more complex dull fruits let's for example look for a double fruit in the toolbox to emphasize this point so uh, not my models double fruit are you joking it doesn't want to show any double fruits yeah cool Okay, so now I've got this to work. So let's hopefully look out for a complex double fruit model. What is this? This is actually good for our purposes. Let me let me take this model, okay? So complex doesn't really equal good looking in this context, as you can see. But Let's actually use this to emphasize one point. So let's pretend that this is our double fruit model, okay? So it has no welding inside of it. And what happens, as you can see, is that the handle is in our hands while the other parts have spawned right there. And they just fall apart. They fell apart, as you can see. And this is the importance of welding. Welding would have would have prevented this from happening okay so how can you weld everything now and i'm gonna show you a very easy method all right guys so let's take this model okay so i, I, I want to show it i want to show this on this model right here although it is a free model <clears throat> but if you understand the way of doing this on this model then you can do it on every other model as well so let's actually do it like this wait I'm gonna I'm gonna be calling this port as well, so I'm I'm, I'm gonna make this very difficult for you. So I'm, I'm gonna be calling this port as well, and I'm gonna group everything. Let's pretend that you have just opened up an uncopy lock place of a former One Piece game, and you found a fruit model you would like to use. Okay, but sadly the fruit model wasn't wasn't inside of a tool; it was inside of a model. If you take a look inside of the model. Then you'll see that there is no port called handle whatsoever. So, what can you do? 
So the first step is that you need to find out what your handle part is. In our context, it is on our case, it is very difficult to find out what the handle part is because everything or the handle part itself. So we know that there is one because we've just seen it before, but it is hidden underneath those spheres right here. So, but I would say that this is the handle part. Okay. Now let, let's pretend that our, our fruit model has no handle part. So I've just, I've just deleted it. What would we do then? So then we would go ahead and then we would take now we would, we would we would ins we would insert a part i'm sorry and then we would call this we'll call this handle all right and then we would <clears throat> cover this whole thing up okay so as we've done in the first episode all right and then make sure that it is transparent now once you have your handle part right here next step is to take every other part and move it inside of your handle <clears throat> now next step is to make sure that inside of the properties tab so you have everything selected right here next step is to make sure that anchor is false masterless is true can collide is false and apply the same features on this handle part as well can collide false anchored false masters true okay now the next step is the following one add a local script inside of here so you can't add the local script inside of anything else it doesn't really matter what matters is that it should be very or it should be inside of the same parent as the handle Okay, so if your handle is inside of a model and put it inside of the model, if the handle is inside of the workspace and put the local screen inside of the workspace, just make sure that the parent equals the handles, the handles parent. Okay. Now the next step is the following. You want to write this for IV in pairs, script parent handle get descendants do. If V is a match part or V is a union operation or V is a part then local W instance new belt constraint inside of V part zero equals uh, V na script parent handle w part one equals v look let me explain this to you so what we are basically doing right here is that we are referring to the handle right here okay so script parent handle but let me actually rewrite this to workspace model handle and I'm going to be explaining to you why. So, workspace model handle refers to our handle right here. What we're doing right here is that we are basically telling the script to loop through every descendant of this handle. So, what is a descendant? A descendant is everything which is inside of this handle. So, not only these parts, which are obviously inside of inside of here. But also everything which 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 is inside of these parts and everything which is inside of the parts of these parts and so on and so on okay and we only want to look out for the parts which are either a mesh port and you and you need operation or a part okay so you might ask why first of all there are there are a few more physical parts such as a vetch port trust port but those are Let's, let's call them non-popular, so barely anyone uses them. And barely anyone to no one uses them when it comes to Dell Fruits. That's the first thing. And second thing, those three are the most popular parts when it comes to modeling and Dell Fruit modeling especially. That's the reason why, we all, we are, why we're only looking out for these three parts. So if any of the descendants is one of these three, 
Then we want to create a vault. So a vault constraint inside of this part. Let me explain you what a vault constraint is in this context. So you guys know that at vaults or welding in general, they help you or they <clears throat> they're responsible for a part being attached to another. Now, there are different vault instances. There is this vault constraint, for example, but you also have the normal Roblox vault. Let me show you what I mean. So vault constraint and this default vault. And let's take a look at the differences. So if you take a look at the properties of the vault constraint, you can see that the properties are part zero, part one, active, enabled, but we want to overlook them because they are not important for us. But part zero and part one. Now, if we take a look at the vault itself, you can see that you can see that there is a there are much more properties, such as C zero, C one, part zero, part one. So what do C zero and C one stand for? Basically, coordinate frame C frame zero, C frame one. The zero stands for the zero part. The C1 stands for uh, part one. And I'm going to be explaining you what part one, part zero mean in this context. Basically, <clears throat> when we speak of welding, then we want to attach one part to another. Now, when you attach a part to another, there is always the part you are attaching something onto. And there is the part you are attaching onto something. Let me Let me try to give you an example. So, if you put a stick into into dirt and toss a flag on the stick, okay, then you're not attaching the earth onto the stick, but you're attaching the stick into the earth, and you are attaching the flag on on top of the stick, you know. In this case, part zero is the earth, part one is the stick. I hope that this was clear. So, yeah, as you can see, this weld instance contains much more properties. So the C frame for our port zero and port ones, and we do not want to mess with that. That's the reason why we want to use a weld constraint. What the weld constraint does is that it basically just takes the C frame of how things are currently, and then it just uses them. And that is exactly what we want to do. We do not want to tell specifically to each instance that 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 this is the c1 and this is the c0 you know so we do not want to mess with that those are just extra responsibilities we don't we do not want to take but yeah <clears throat> and this also explains what part zero right here means so workspace model handle so the handle becomes the part we are attaching things onto and in this context in this case we are attaching all of the descendants onto this handle and this is how welding works now you could put literally anything inside of this handle. You could put multiple ports in this port if you want to. You could put all of these ports again in this port if you want to. It would attach anything to this handle and this would work. <clears throat> as long as your port or your descendant is one of these three. Now, let me, let me explain to you why we are using workspace.model.handle instead of script.parent.handle. The thing is that we, we are now going to take the script. So control A, control C to copy and uh, to select all and copy. And then we want to paste it inside of this comment bar. Now this comment bar is not or, or, or does not have the same location as your local script. And that is the problem. Your comment bar can only work with workspace.model. The handle it, it it doesn't know where where it is parented currently. I think that it. I don't wanna I don't wanna talk shit, but it could possibly be that its parent is nil. But yeah, just know that this comment bar is not parented to this model. Therefore, we cannot do script dot parent dot handle. But we have to do a more general reference by calling the workspace, and then the model, and then the handle. That's how things are gonna be now. Let's take a look into some of these descendants and let's enter. Let's see what happens. As you can see, a valid constraint has been created in each of these within a split second. And yeah, we can now get rid of this local script. We can now take this handle and we can put it inside of. Let's actually take this tool right here. 
we can now put it inside of this tool. Let's equip this tool and let's see what happens. And there we go. That's the way in how you weld. Okay. How you weld stuff. That's the way to do it, guys. And I I had someone in the comment section. I'm sorry, dude, if you have bought this course and if you're seeing this. This guy has told me to use a plugin. So there is a plugin out there. I haven't looked into it. I'm sorry, my man. I'm so busy. I haven't looked into it. And he's like, yeah, why are you showing the showing your, your your subscribers this way? There is a plugin which makes things much more easier. And I haven't looked into it, my man. This is the only way I know. I'm sorry. But yeah. Uh, where did we left off? Yeah. Let's delete this because this is now our fruit model. And let me let me still give you some some advices. Yeah. So this example contained a lot of parts, but in our in our case we only have one part instead of here. If you have the same case as me that you have only a few parts right here, then you can just go ahead and do it manually. So just add a belt constraint by yourself. Port zero is always the handle. Port one is the port you're trying to attach onto the belt, uh, onto the handle. Make sure that can collide is false, massless is true, anchor is false. Make sure the same applies to the handle. And then you can just go ahead, put it inside of your tool, and you're good to go. That's it, guys. So, thanks for watching. In the next episode, we will create the data store. And then we will finish with the core of this course we still have three episodes of bonus, uh, bonus content which we will then take a look at and yeah see you guys in the next episode